All right, so uh, I want to start out by first saying how much I appreciate uh, George, Kevin, Flus, and also Ryan for giving me the opportunity to lead this offense. I also want to thank Shane Waldron. Kind of gets lost in this transition of how it affects people in a lot in their families and their lives. Uh, I met Shane back in 2020, first working with the Rams, and he was uh, phenomenal to me and my family to help on, on borders uh, coming to the NFL. And so I just want to say thank you to him. Uh, but again, it was just eyes up, moving forward, excited about the opportunity. This will not be a one-man show. I'm excited to kind of work and collaborate with our entire staff and our players to fix the problems that we do have. Had a great conversation yesterday uh, with, uh, with Caleb about my thoughts moving forward, issues to fix, and uh, just had a phenomenal walkthrough. Guys were upbeat, moving around, uh, being really detailed, so excited about practice. Cool. Thomas, questions? There. Thomas, you've been in this position before where you've been asked to now call plays for an offense that is not yours. Correct fix what's been going on. Was there any reluctance to move into this role? And, and if so, how did you move past that, I guess, to get this enthusiasm done? Yeah, reluctance, no. It's my job. It's what I'm asked to do. I'm excited about the opportunity. Um, again, unfortunate about the circumstances as far as Shane being fired. Um, but the scenarios between Carolina and here, I don't call it at all. I have done it before. And uh, like I said, I'm kind of excited to be able to collaborate with our staff and our players to get it fixed get going in the right direction. So in order to fix any problem, in order to fix any problem, you first got to identify where this thing went wrong. Yeah. From your vantage point, what do you think went wrong with this offense, be it from the spring through the summer to the point now where it's four to five and three pretty unproductive weeks offensive? Yeah, here's what I say about fixing the problem. So it starts uh, every day we walk in the building. What I said to the team today and to our office of uh, staff and players is uh, two things you control when you walk in the building. It's your effort and your attitude. So it starts there first, right? How we approach the meetings, being detailed, being locked in, and then transferring that to the actual practice field, uh, being intentional about the walkthrough, but also uh, making practice as hard as humanly possible so the game can somewhat become easier. Uh, so to me, that's going to be our focus, what we're locked in on. And so understand that practice preparation always leads to game day execution. So that's our focus. Thomas, what's, the, what's your philosophy on the type of voice you want to be for Caleb during games? Um... Well, first and foremost, I'm always be myself. So I'm a pretty direct person. That's what I kind of told him yesterday when we, we spoke for the first time. And I've obviously been around him. I've been in the room the entire time, but just in a different capacity. So, um, But I, I think on game day when it comes to how you deliver information, uh, to be solution-oriented, um, to keep myself calm, also keep him calm as well, to kind of decompress it in, in every single drive we have, to kind of you know, look forward to what's coming in the next drive. Thomas, what things did you point out to Caleb that he needs to address by himself, uh, regardless of what's going on around him? Yeah, I appreciate the question. I'm not going to go into detail about what we talked about individually. Uh, but, again, it was all a positive conversation. He was receptive to it. I uh, talked about uh, what he can fix and be better for our offense. Um, clearly, obviously, quarterback spot is the most difficult position. So we got to be better all around him. Uh, but also starts with us how we coach him, uh, being more detailed, being more de demanding with just him, but also the entire staff as well. Are you going to be upstairs or downstairs? I'll be upstairs. Eddie Rufus was talking about the need for creativity in the offense, and that was something that was lacking, and he likes the creativity. Can you start over? I just missed the first part of what you said. Eddie I'm sorry. Eddie was saying he needs more creativity in the offense, and that was something that was lacking, especially over the last three weeks. How do you bring creativity now to this offense? Uh, well, I think at this point when it comes to where we are in the season, you can't reinvent the wheel. I'm not going to try to do that at all. That would be um, kind of send us in a, in a spiral going backwards, in my opinion. But it's about being able to try to find the best ways of, to be effective with our playmakers, right, to be able to marry what we do from a formation and motion standpoint. Uh, everything to me starts up front, starts with the run game, how we attack, knock it forward mentality, and we build off of that. Thomas, what, what do you think your quarterback does well and that you need to emphasize in your scheme offensively? I think it does a lot well. Um, I think when it comes to just natural ability from throwing the football is, I think, clearly and obvious. I think being able to understand how to get the ball out of his hands as fast as possible when it comes to you know, the concepts we kind of just end up dialing up, but also being able to let him um, use his natural guy given the ability at times when it's, when it's relevant. Not every play, uh, but when it comes to especially situational ball, third down, red zone, and come alive with that. What did you, look, what did you learn from last year? And I know they're not the exact same situation, but what do you learn about coaching up a number one pick and everything that comes with it on the field and off the field and the pressure and all of that? that you can apply this year? Yeah, again, I get the question. Um, these are two different players uh, in ability and also mentality-wise. I uh, obviously enjoyed that time I had with Bryce uh, last year. Great dude, great player, but these are uh, different circumstances. Um, but as far as the pressure goes, right, um, pressure to me is a privilege. That means people expect something positive from you. 
So I embrace that. Uh, excited about the opportunity. It comes with the territory of this job. And uh, honestly, if you don't want that, you probably should do something else. Coach, you mentioned what's attitude. The what's the challenge of coming in mid -season? What's the challenge of coming in midseason for you? You actually interviewed for this job originally. Correct. Um, how much harder is it to step in midseason rather than if they had hired you in the first place? Yeah, I mean, to me, it's about just the daily focus. Um, I don't think too much about too far ahead. Also, we have a game this week. I know that's coming on Sunday. Uh, but again, we just had a great walkthrough. Uh, my focus is on finishing this press conference, getting ready for practice, and just taking it one day at a time. It's about the details, uh, being solution-oriented, uh, have, having a positive mentality and attitude, but also a demand more for myself, but also for my players also. Conversation, attitude, and effort. When, when you talk about those two things, those are two of the biggest questions around Nate Davis from everybody outside looking in. Is that one of the reasons that he's not here today and were you one of the voices on why he's not here right now? Yeah, I'll let Flus have any questions about Nate Davis. Is, uh, is substantial improvement realistic considering all the factors in play here, taking over midseason, someone else's offense? Yeah, I mean, I, I put no limitations on our success at all. The goal is to um, not focus as much on being perfect, but chasing excellence every single day. So that's our goal, it's our focus to prepare the right way to go play uh, in, in the game the right way. With your play calling on game day, what? in the pocket, how do you feel about the short passing game as a way to help him out of that? Uh, I, feel, I feel good about the pass plays we call to get the ball in the hands of our playmakers, whether it's short, medium, or long play. So uh, it's kind of a collective effort when it comes to how we protect him in the pocket, him protecting himself, but also us doing a better job up front as well. In your past stops, what have you learned about the challenges that come with calling plays on game day and, and when things don't go maybe how you expect them? Yeah, I, mean, I think one is kind of very similar to being a player. It's about how you prepare, um, investing in the game plan, and kind of have a clear vision of how you see a game being played out. Starting first with normal D&D, &D, obviously get into situations, third down, red zone, two minute, kind of be involved as well. Uh, but to me, it's also about being able to adapt and adjust to the game as well, kind of just based on what the opponent gives you. Who are some mentors you've had that if specifically help prepare you for being a coordinator, being a play caller, not, not, not being a player back in the day or things like that? Yeah. Who, who? Um, I, I would say everybody along the way as a stop. It's not a cop-out answer. It's just the truth of, of me kind of learning from everybody I've been around uh, across the way. I mean, I had a chance to be around Andy Ludwig a couple years ago when I was at Wisconsin. It was a really good job as far as how you married the run in the past. Um, I've been with Coach Rick for a number of different years. He was a long-time play caller and head coach as well. Um, obviously, Sean is my biggest influence as far as overall background and how you design an offense and activate that and use your personnel well. Um, so I lean heavily on him. Um, and then I would say uh, last year having a chance to be around Coach Caldwell, who is one of the best coaches I've ever been around, best communicators, leaders, teachers. Um, he's definitely somebody I lean on as well. Thomas, what? How do you approach a group of players who you know, naturally, many of those messages, they're frustrated. You got guys who are just frustrated with the way things have gone. What's been your approach to some of those vets on offense? Just I don't know if you've had one-on-ones with them or like what, what's kind of your message to them? Because obviously everybody wants things to be better. Yeah, I, mean, I think a mix of both when it comes to one-on-one -on -one conversations, but also addressing the group. Uh, but to me, it's about clear, open, and honest communication. Like I'm not going to dance around to certain topics or even individuals when it comes to addressing certain needs, but also not alleviating pressure off ourselves as coaches to get stuff right. So, again, it's going to be a collaborative effort, all eyes and all, uh, all folks kind of going forward to get us better. Your one, your one productive game uh, as a play caller with the Panthers last year was against the Packers. Why was that game so much better than all the others? <laughs> uh, you know, so my goal was to have every game be that same success. That's a tough, uh, tough uh, answer there. I, I would say just different, uh, different defensive coordinator last year, obviously. Um, but I think just those guys did a really good job in that day, making plays, being locked in, being focused, executing the game plan. So that's the goal. Anytime you call the game. We've heard from the players through different media outlets that they didn't feel that the practices were, that everybody was practicing at the same level, I should say, that everybody wasn't going at it with the same intensity. Have you noticed that? And how do you address that now with you taking over the charge of that? Well, I can't say who said that. I didn't hear it. Uh, I'll be honest with you, during the season, I kind of block out everything else outside noise-wise and focus on my job. So I couldn't tell you who said what. Uh, but I do understand when it comes to wanting to have success, everything is about preparation, whether it's, managing your finances or playing football. So it's all about our daily application, uh, us being locked in, being detailed, giving phenomenal effort, uh, being solution-oriented, and uh, getting the problems fixed. Anybody? 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 Yes. Anybody? Yes. Do you feel like some of the issues of the last couple of weeks are quickly fixable? 
That's a tough question to answer. Um, I don't know what's a quick fix, and I'm not really, really looking into quick fixes. Um, I want long-term solutions to be able to kind of get us going in the right direction. Uh, obviously, the goal, again, is to have success and have success immediately. I'm not doing anything to be uh, a loser or have a loser's mentality. Um, our players don't either. So those guys are focused. They're excited. Uh, again, we're all in this thing together. Um, so we're, we're rocking and rolling, getting ready for practice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.